In the previous video, we saw how to create applications using Flask and SQL Alchemy. And we saw how to create our database structure using the db.createAll command. What we're gonna look at in this video is the concept of migrations, which are files that keep track of changes to our schema or the structure of our database over time. This is very similar to working with Git, where if you don't like something, you can go back in time and you can share with other developers what the structure of your application or in our case, the structure of our database is going to look like. When you work with other developers, especially in a production environment, using something like migrations is essential. It's really hard to manage what a database looks like with just using a command like db.createAll when you might make small changes to a database. So it's really nice to have files that keep track of those changes and a structure where you can clearly identify how the schema has changed over time. So to get started using migrations, we're going to have to install a couple modules and make a specific file. We're not going to have to change too much in our app.py, but we're going to have to introduce some new concepts. So first, I'm going to open up Sublime. I'm going to head over to my app.py and make sure that I'm using a different database. So I'll call this Flask Student App Migrations. I'll make sure that in the terminal, I have a database by that name. So I'll create DB Flask Student App Migrations. Now, what I also want to make sure that I do is make a virtual environment. So I'll MK virtual ENV, and we'll call this learn migrations. And I'll give that a second to install pip and any other dependencies. Make sure I have Python 3 installed in this virtual environment. It's going to make things much faster. Now, before we saw the dependencies that we needed, so we're going to install Flask. We're going to install Flask Modus. We're going to install IPython. We're going to install Flask SQL Alchemy. We're also going to install Psycho PG2 so that we can use Postgres. And now the additional modules that we want to install are going to be Flask Migrate as well as Flask Script. And Flask Migrate is going to be the tool that we use to actually create these migrations. But how are we going to create these migrations? Well, we're going to do it by running command line scripts. And that's where Flask Script is going to come in and help us out. So I'll give these modules a second to install. And what we need to do is set up a file where we're going to configure how to run our migrations as well as how to run them from the command line. So we're going to call that file manage.py. I'm going to open this up in Sublime. And the nice thing about our manage.py is you're usually going to find yourself writing very, very similar code each time. We're going to start by importing from our app the DB and the app variable. We're going to need the app variable to tell Flask about the application we're working with. And we're going to need DB to tell Flask Migrate specifically what database we're going to make migration changes to. We're also, from Flask Script, going to import a class called Manager. And the Manager class is going to be where we add specific commands to run from the command line. One more thing we're going to import from Flask Migrate. What are we going to import? We're going to import two classes, one called Migrate and the other called Migrate Command. Migrate is the class to configure our migrations, which we can store in a variable that's going to accept the Flask application and the DB variable. Remember, the DB variable is the SQL Alchemy instance for our Flask application. Just to show you what I mean by that, that's this line right here on line 8. Back in our manage.py, we want to make another line. It says manager is going to be the manager class with our app. Remember that manager is the class that we import from Flask script. And manager is what we're going to use to configure command line scripts. The question is, what command line script are we going to be running? We're going to be running the generation of our migrations. We're going to use Flask Migrate to create these migration files, to run those migration files to actually make a change to our schema, and if we want, to even undo or roll back some changes that we've made before. We'll see that in a second. We only need two more lines right here. We're going to add a command. And what's that command going to be called? You could call this whatever you'd like, but we're going to call it db. What this allows us to do is type in something like python manage.py db, and then we get to specify whatever commands that we want. But where do we get these commands from? We get them from the migrate command class. And we're going to see a list in a second of all the commands that we can run after this db. Finally, we'll add a quick if name is main, and we'll make sure that we run any of these command line scripts. We'll use the run method on the manager variable that we have right here. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to head back to the terminal. And we're going to take a quick look at Python manage py db. And when I run this, let's see what happens. You can actually see the usage is to perform database migrations. 
you can see right here all these arguments that we can pass after the word db. But we're only going to use three of them right now. The first, which you're going to run one time, is init. This creates a new migration repository. This is actually going to generate a couple folders for us where we're going to see what our migrations look like. We're then going to run a command called migrate, which is going to auto-generate a migration file for us. A migration file is simply just a Python file that tells SQL Alchemy what commands to run to make changes to our database. We're going to see how it actually figures out how to generate those in a second. But once we've migrated, we need to upgrade. And what that's going to do is take that migration that we made and actually run it. It's important to note that when you generate a migration, you don't immediately make a change to your database. This is very similar to the idea of adding with Git. Before you commit, you have to add. You can think of migrating as making the file and staging it, but not actually running that command to generate anything in the database. That's what the upgrade command is for. It's an extra step to make sure you're really sure you're doing what you want to do. So let's see how this works. I'm going to run python manage py db init. And you can see right here, we're creating a bunch of directories. We're generating a bunch of files. Well, let's go see what that looks like. We're going to open this up in Sublime. Now, back in Sublime, we can see that we have a migrations folder right here. We can see there's a versions folder and a whole bunch of configuration files that we're not really going to have to touch right now. The most important folder here is actually the versions folder, but there's nothing in there right now. That's because we haven't actually generated any migrations. By running the init command, we've simply just generated a folder to provide the structure for our migrations. So you might be wondering, how do these migrations get generated? Well, Flask Migrate is pretty smart. What it's going to do is go through our app.py, and it's going to take a look at any of the code right over here that actually involves generating information for that database. So it's going to generate a table for students. It's going to generate the columns for ID, first name, and last name by looking at what this model has so far. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go back here. And what's the command that we use to generate our migrations? Python manage py db migrate. We're going to run this command, which generates a file in the migrations folder called 9f, etc. .py. Maybe that's not such a great name. We'll see how to change that in a little bit. But back in our migrations folder, we now have this Python file, which has two commands, upgrade and downgrade. We saw we actually use the upgrade function to make a change to our database. And what are we doing here? We're creating a table called students, adding the columns, and adding a primary key constraint. Where's that all coming from? All this right here. Remember, the dunder init doesn't have to do with the creation of the table itself. That's what's going to deal with creating the rows. It's this code above. It's these properties that we make on the class that actually make the changes to our columns. So we don't have to change anything here right now. And you might be wondering, did we just actually make a change to our database? Well, let's take a quick look. PSQL. What was the name of our database back in app.py? Flask student app migrations. If we take a look at the tables that we have right now, there's actually just a table called Alembic version. You might be running, what is Alembic? Alembic is a module that Flask migrate depends on. Alembic is actually the module that helps with a lot of the migrations. So Alembic is really the backbone of Flask Migrate. Flask Migrate is just a nice little abstraction for Flask on top of Alembic. But what's inside of this table? Let's select star from Alembic version, and we'll see there's nothing there. And that's because we haven't actually run any migrations. If we take a look again, we don't have a student's table. We don't have any information there. That's because we've just generated the migration. We haven't actually run it. So let's get out of PSQL, and let's run this migration. The name of that command is db upgrade. We're going to run that, and we're going to see running upgrade with an empty message. This unique ID right here is the ID for that migration. Let's take a look in PSQL once again. Let's take a look at our tables, and we'll see there we go. Now we have a student's table. If we take a look at Alembic version, we'll actually see we have a version number. This looks familiar. This is the ID of the migration that we used. To make a change to our schema, what change did we make? We added the student's table. Let's take a look at what's going on in the student's table. And we can see we have a column with an ID of integer, first name, last name, and a student's primary key. Great. We've made a change to our database using a migration. What's nice about this is we have a file that is keeping track of changes that we've made. And other developers can see what those changes have been and easily run those migrations 
to have the same exact database schema that we might at the same time. So it's very helpful when working with other developers. So what happens if we want to make a change to our database? Let's imagine that we want to add another column. We're going to add a column for favorite color. And that's going to be a db.column with another db.txt. We don't have to worry about this just yet, but if we want, we can even add it. This is not going to affect anything on the table level. This is just for our rows. But if you're going to make a change to your schema over here, you might want to make sure that any time you make a student, you give it a favorite color. So if I save this right now and I take a look in PSQL, do you think we'll see that favorite color? Well, let's select star from students. And we still don't see it. And the reason is because we can't just make a change to our database by writing one line of Python code here. What's important is we need to actually run another migration and make a more permanent change to our database. This allows us to be a little bit less haphazard about making changes and not realize what we're doing. So I'll quit out of PSQL. And how do we do this again? It's the same process, Python manage.py db. But remember, I don't need to run the init command again. I've done that once already. So what I'm going to run is db migrate. But this time, I'm going to pass in a flag of dash m. And I'll specify inside of here, adding the favorite color column. We'll save this. And we'll see the name of the file is now that ID, but adding the favorite color column. It's really important to give your migration some kind of message so that when you take a look back in Sublime, you can clearly get more of a description as to what's happening here. So what's happening in this migration? We're adding a column to the student's table called favorite color, which is text. And if we want to downgrade or roll back, all we do is drop that column. So one more time, let's go back to PSQL and make sure you understand what's going to happen here. Should we see that column right now? Well, let's take a look at the student's table. We still don't. And remember, when you generate the migration, you don't actually make that change to the database yet. There's still one more command that we need to run. So we're going to run Python manage py db upgrade. And what this is going to do is run that specific migration. Take one more look in PSQL. Take a look back at our students table. And now we see that favorite color column. So migrations take a little time to wrap your head around. But they're a really essential concept when working with other developers and something that you're going to want to include for any application where you're using a relational database. The nice thing about this here is that I don't really need to change too much in my code. I'll need to add a little bit of logic for adding a favorite color since I've added that property. But for the most part, this code over here is not really going to change. Migrations simply are on the database level. They don't really affect things like the routing or the way that we're creating rows in our database. What's important about migrations is we now have files that we can use to keep track of changes to the database and that we can share with other developers so they can take an empty database and immediately get up to speed with changes that we've made. Instead of telling someone to run db.createAll and not really know what your database looks like, what changes you've made, you now have a really nice way to keep track of changes to your database. So that's all for migrations now. Practice with these exercises. Take a look through the curriculum and read through this stuff again if you need, or watch this video again, and I'll see you in the next screencast.